our research in Quebec. Uh, so I started to work on uh, the control of uh, Canada thistle, soft thistle, and cold foot five years ago. Uh, it was actually the main topic for the research chair we applied for because we uh, felt that it was uh, the major barrier for the cash of organic farms in Quebec. And uh, I wasn't too happy to start to work on these weeds because I thought I would never find a way to control them. And uh, luckily, we actually really resolved the problem for thousand Quebec. Uh, we have ways that work, and this is what I'm going to present. Unfortunately, for the nor northern areas of Quebec, it's not working because they're not growing soybean or corn. But we are uh, working with them uh, with on other uh, possibilities, and I will um, uh, talk about it a little bit at the end. Uh, so, uh, second slide, the outline. I'm going to make an introduction. I'm going to talk about the Orange Farm trial. And basically, we worked on uh, adjusting a spring fallow uh, in order to exhaust the weeds. And this has turned to be quite successful. Uh, then I will uh, talk about the key element to a spring fallow, what we have to respect for it to work, and also other cultural practices that we looked at uh, for the control of uh, fish. Uh, slide number three. Uh, okay, so I talked about that. It, it's really a major problem. The biggest is the South Isle. The Canada thistle is more of a problem for people who have reduced tillage. It comes faster. Uh, and we started to have problems with uh, cold put, Tissilago farfara. It's less important, uh, less farmers have it, less field, but um, when it's there, it's quite hard to eliminate. And uh, so in my presentation, I will also talk about cold put, but really the stuff that works is cold foot also works against uh, Canada thistle and soft thistle. And so uh, the weeds, you probably know, are very hard to control uh, because uh, of their deep root system. Uh, they also have a horizontal root system. And uh, what we came to realize is the seed production is a major problem. Uh, especially for South Thistle. Not so for Canada Thistle, it's there, but it's something we really have to take into account now when we manage these weeds. I guess you're familiar with the weeds. Uh, they're quite nice, actually, uh, purple, yellow, and uh, the Tissilago Farfara, the uh, cold tooth, if you don't have it, it's uh, the bottom part. What's interesting to know, next slide, slide, oh, there is no number on this one, uh, it's the roots. And uh, it's really important to understand uh, first that uh, all the three weeds have a vertical root that go quite deep, more than a meter deep. And uh, for the, uh, the uh, Canada thistle, there is also a horizontal uh, rhizome but these horizontal rhizomes are rather deep. They can be, on the graph, it's nearly 50 centimeters deep. It's not always as deep. It can be 20, 30 centimeters deep. And uh, the uh, uh, South Pistol has a very shallow horizontal root system, about 5 to 10 centimeters deep. So uh, the tillage will affect these two weeds in a different way, and I will come back to that later on. Uh, it's a little less clear cut with the cold foot. There's some vertical, some oblique, some horizontal rhizomes. Um, and my observation is that it tends to react to tillage the same way as uh, Canada So We'll come to that again later on. Uh, slide number six. Uh, one thing which is interesting to know is uh, you also have different phenotypes within the same weed. Uh, for Canada thistle, you can have, in the same field, you can have some uh, patches that grow a lot faster, that are more aggressive, 
some that go less fast. You can see on the slide, the left and the right are quite different. And uh, it's even stronger for uh, South Kiso. Uh, next slide. Uh, you have uh, some phenotypes that are, they're all aggressive, but if you see on the picture, the right side is super aggressive. Like uh, it's the same field of wheat, and on the right side, you barely see any wheat at all. The leaves are much bigger. Uh, there is no light coming in. So you might do trials, and uh, first you have to check that uh, what you're testing is pretty homogeneous. And sometimes you have different response within the same field. So that is just to make it a little more fun when you work on these weights. Um, as next slide, um, you have to really be aware of seedlings. And one of the first trials we did, uh, we did uh, spring fallow. I will describe it later on. And it worked really well. At that point, we were trying to test uh, spring fallow followed by a green manure, an aggressive green manure. He was, here he was peas. And um, the, the year we did it, it seemed to work really, really well. But there was no fall tillage, and the next year it was again full of taufito. And what we realized is we had a lot of seedlings coming. So we were managing to eliminate the rhizomes, but we didn't take care of the seedlings. And the year after we had again taufito. So this is really important. Like in our spring fallow, the plant from rhizome went down from 32 stems per square meter to zero, but the new seedling, it started from zero, it increased to 70, and uh, I guess because of the green manure competition, it went down to 7.5 plants per square meter in the fall, but that's a lot of South Iso to have next year, so that's uh, one thing we have to remember. I haven't seen that with the Canada people. I have seen seedlings, but I haven't seen a reinfestation to seedlings. So, next slide, number nine, uh, strategies to control. So, uh, well, the old strategy is to exhaust the plant by a full summer fallow. Uh, of course, we didn't want to do that because it's expensive. There is the cost of the fallow, and uh, you lose one year of crop. And uh, if you have a three ton per hectare of soybean at a thousand dollar per hectare on a field of 20 hectares, that's the fair chunk of money that we lose. So, how can we do better? Uh, what we were looking at also is hay the rotation. It's good for the soil, but again, it's expensive. You need two years of uh, cash crop, and uh, at sixty thousand dollars per year, we were not too happy with this solution. Although uh, the improvement in the soil it may be justified sometimes. Uh, and some farmer actually have used it and found that it really is worth it. But uh, I'll talk about it a bit later on. We have very mixed results. Next slide, number 10. Uh, so we were looking at more economical strategies and the first strategy we looked at, uh, no, sorry. Uh, we also wondered about uh, whether a summer fallow after cereal would work, just like, a, just like for quag grass. And uh, we saw that it could work for Canada thistle. Actually, I have a question for you if you tried it. Uh, but nobody wanted to try it because uh, in Quebec, the farmers uh, seed clover in their cereal and uh, they get the, the nitrogen for the next year corn and they really don't want to do a some fallow after cereal. So that was out of question. We didn't test it. And we came with the idea of doing a summer fallow followed by a green manure. So you don't completely lose your year. You have some nitrogen that you grow with your green manure for the corn next year. It worked. Uh, we had fairly good results. Uh, but it, we wanted to do better. <coughs> so we started to try spring fallow followed by a late seeded soybean. So I'm going to talk about this technique. 
And uh, the spring fallow can be followed by a late seeded soya bean because it's the crop we can seed late in Quebec. Corn we have to seed earlier, so it's not so good. And of course, the late seeded soya bean can be replaced by a late seeded or a seeded green manure. That works, we, we're doing it too. So I'm gonna talk about the spring fallow on the next slide, it's number 11. What we do is two to three destruction of the uh, weed in the spring. We leave it grow, we destroy it, we leave it grow, we destroy it. And um, we have to destroy, destroy it with uh, either sea pine, harrow, or a chisel, anything that has a sweep, and the sweeps have to overlap quite a bit. We use a working depth of uh, five to 10 centimeters. The people who have chisels, they go a little deeper, sometimes 15 centimeters. So we use sweeps that overlap. And we've noticed that depending on the sweep, the efficacy, efficacy can vary, but usually it works well. Uh, so this is one example here of um, that sort of a, it's not a chisel and it's not a co uh, cultivator. It's a kind of a hybrid which was built by the producer uh, that can work at a pretty precise depth and have a good overlap between the sweeps. That works quite well. Uh, I've had a few farmers with who I worked that uh, after a year or two of trying with uh, a different cultivator went and bought this uh, aggressive chisel with uh, sweeps and it works quite well. Uh, what you have to be really careful when you do your work and when you destroy the weed is not to have something like this. You can see that uh, here, well, it looks like the sweep didn't overlap right, but in that it is not the case there. Uh, it's uh, special for Canada thistle. It's not a problem with the other weeds. It's as soon as the weeds start to elongate, and we should always do the work before they try, start to elongate, the stem is very fibrous. And you can see on the right side of the photo, instead of being cast, the stem is pushed to the side. So Canada Fisoil, we have to be really careful. Next slide, uh, number 14. Uh, you can see with Canada Fisoil, um, the stage to work, uh, to work it is maximum uh, seven, eight each stage. After that, uh, you can see the fiber on the left uh, bottom corner in the in the stem and uh, you can also see a picture with my two hands I'm trying to uh, cut the stem in two and it's completely impossible and on the far right you see uh, a stem that was pushed by a sweep but not cut so with Canada people always really be careful with that uh, what we want is to destroy the weeds in the spring when the reserves at min are minimal. There is a fair bit of, well, of literature on it and it gives different stages. Uh, some say for Canada thistle it's minimum at four, four to six leaves. Uh, others say six to eight. Uh, others say it's at the beginning of elongation. For me, uh, I think what's important is to destroy it when before elongation. So four to eight leaves is okay. Same for South Iso. I go for four to eight leaves for the stage to destroy it and before elongation. Cold foot is a little different. Um, we, we, there is not a lot of literature on it. And uh, what we found is you have to destroy it when it's two to four leaves. It's very slow. It stays for a long time at the four leaf stage. And when we reach the six leaves, it's too late. And uh, if you miss the right stage, uh, you lost your time. I put the date for the, the first time it reached this stage around Montreal, but of course it varies with the area. The plants look like this when it's a good time to destroy them. They're, in, in French, we say stade rosette, like when it's, it's really flat on the ground and it hasn't started to elongate.
And I'm just gonna, and sorry, I'm just gonna interrupt you quickly one sec. Uh, I think there's just a couple people who haven't muted their phones, just hear a bit of rustling. If you can just press star six okay. or a microphone uh, with a line through it on your smartphone, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. It's Janine here. I'd also like to ask what the Barden zone is for the Montreal area, because if it's two to three, that's what most of southern Manitoba is. So it might be similar dates. Do you know which the garden zone is for the Montreal area? Um, I think it's more three to, three to I'm four. I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay, so uh, uh, next slide. Oh, we did 16, so it would be 17, although the 17 is hidden. So what I'm going to present is the uh, highlight of five years of data. Uh, we did some, uh, some uh, scientific uh, trials with uh, classical randomized design. We did a lot of farm adapted design where we separated fields into two. The great thing with these weeds is you can easily see whether your difference between treatment is due to chance or not, as you can see on that picture. Uh, we have two different treatments separated by the orange light. So, light. I hope you can still hear me. I dropped my phone. Um, okay, so um, we've done, we've repeated uh, the trials on uh, quite a few farms. We adjusted the trials to uh, each farm. And so that's what I will present. Next slide. So case study for the spring fallow, I'll talk about the uh, South Thistle, Canada Thistle, called Foot. So South Thistle, we did uh, a few uh, preliminary trials in 2012 and 13. Here I present one in 2013. Nothing, of course, worked the way we wanted. It was raining uh, when we wanted to do the treatment. But in the end, we ended up uh, actually uh, cutting a field in two and we did either two spring passes or only one late spring passes you can see the dates in the table it was either june 19 and then we see it right away or we did two passes it's may 9 and june 19. not the optimal date uh, we know now but still what we saw is a huge difference in the pressure of uh, south Isol. With the two spring passes, um, we were at 0 0.1 plant per square meter the next, uh, the next summer, while w only one late spring pass, we were at 3.9. So we knew we were onto something. And uh, we concluded that only one late, late distraction when the south soil is advanced is not effective and that was answering a question because a number of people were saying you have to destroy it when it's blooming this is when the reserves are minimum but that's not at all what we observed we saw that uh, two distraction were rather effective and uh, actually we know um, I said this conclusion is valid with cultivated soya bean after fallow, but it is also valid with, uh, we also had good success with non-cultivated uh, soya bean or green manure. We did another trial that uh, had Canada thistle and South thistle, which turned out to be uh, super interesting. Uh, we did two treatments, either one pass, uh, or two paths, and uh, it's between, I don't know how to say in English, like uh, between these two little things on the top, the one and the two, sorry. Uh, because the one path, you can see it was actually done June 17 and 22. I call it one path because there is so little time between the two that I think the effect on the weed was like if we did only one path. And the two paths was May 18 and then June 17 and 22. Everything was planted June 22nd. We realize now that we can have a decent crop if we plant June 22nd. But this time it was just a soya bean uh, seeded as a green manure, six inch row. 
uh, we were still in the early stages. We, you can see the pressure of the South Thistle on the left top and Canada Thistle on the, sorry, on the right top and Canada Thistle on the right bottom. And you can see the plant density, 65 per square meter for South Thistle and 72 for Canada Thistle. And the, the results were, were quite incredible. Next slide. Uh, with the two treatments, the two passes, we had no more south thistle the next year. This is corn uh, planted the next year. And we had just a little bit of Canada thistle. You can see it between the row. It's, it's uh, not very strong. And we had three, three stem per square meter in the zone that were dense the year before. That was not the entire field. Where we did one pass only, uh, we had no more uh, south thistle, but you can see that the Canada thistle was uh, very dense. It didn't work at all. That's bottom right. So usually what works for Canada thistle is going to work for south thistle. So again, we were on to something and we carried on. The Next slide, the 24, the, so the conclusion for the farm trial number two, excellent control for Canada FISO with two destruction. For South FISO, it was good with one or two destruction, but beware, usually you need two. I wouldn't rely on only one. It was just, it just happened that way. I don't know why. And we had good results with narrow row uh, soybean with no mechanical weeding in this situation. Another farm trial, that was a farm that was desperate. There was, that's a soya bean field. Uh, it's uh, slide number 25. Uh, it's a farmer who really focused on, uh, on soil. He wanted to have, uh, you know, keep a very good soil. He was into rich till, which is really close to no till. And this is uh, what led to such an infestation of uh, South Thistle. The density was 22 plants per square meter in large part of the field. And uh, we tried uh, two treatments. I, it wasn't exactly planned, but that's what happened, I have to say. Uh, he did either um, destroy it like he harrowed on May 9th, uh, with a, uh, quite a few passes of um, uh, the cultivator and he seeded May 10 or he did two passes May 9 he actually destroyed everything did another pass on June 5 and did on June 5 and, and what happened is, uh, is this on the left part with the, the work in May and the seeding in May, basically they were weak and no corn, zero ton per hectare. And what was seed, what was uh, reworked in June, so one pass in May, one pass in June, then seeding in June, we, we had uh, nine ton per hectare corn. He had a crop. It was a bit immature because it was a late planting, but there was a huge difference. Next slide. Uh, so what happened, uh, here are some uh, counting, like the one pass in maize on the left, uh, he ended up uh, in, uh, in the, some, uh, the count were done um, in August. Uh, he had uh, nearly 20 stem per square meter and where, where he did two passes, he, he still had quite a few number of stem per square meter, maybe half, 10, 10 stem per square meter, still a lot. But uh, if you have in green, it's the percent cover. So it's the percent of the soil which is hidden by the crop, by the crop, sorry, by the weed. So where it was seeded in May, 80, 85 or 90 percent of the soil was covered with the weed, which means there was a weed and no corn. 
while on the side which was uh, done t with two passes, he had uh, maybe 5% of the soil covered with the weed, which means that there was corn and no weed. The, the corn, it really gave an advantage to the corn. And then it started a, a cycle to uh, beat the, the Canada Fison. So next slide. So we went from uh, the slide on June uh, 2013, where we had nearly uh, only thistle, to the picture of the soya bean, that's the year after the corn, uh, October 2014, where we had to look really hard to find the thistle. I have uh, the, the picture of the bottom. It's one of the rare thistle that I managed to find. So it's worked really well. Um, what uh, you see here? No, sorry. Okay, uh, it worked really well. We had so we had the the fiso, we had the corn with two passes, and after that the soya bean. We also had um, a spring fallow. So basically, we had two spring fallow between June thir uh, 13 and uh, October. 14, that doesn't work, it's October 15, sorry. Uh, and we really got rid of the system. Nobody ever caught this mistake here. And uh, you can see how the, the bean crop looked in 2015. That field was full of thistles uh, begin, uh, in the spring 2013. And um, the late seeding of the, the, the soya bean also really helps to control mustard. Like th this field has a huge pressure of mustard that I want to show you here. This spot here, there was no soya bean. I don't know what happened. Maybe when he did his uh, mechanical weeding, he destroyed some of the soya beans, so there was no competition. And the mustard managed to grow, so that's the amount of pressure that we have. And with the late seeding, the late work, the late seeding, we control it very well. So conclusion for farm trial number three. Uh, the first spring fallow, which was done for corn, the weed density was reduced. Delaying the planting gave a very large competitive advantage to the corn. And in addition, the mustard was quite, was well controlled. The second spring fallow, the year after, a reinforce the effect of the first fallow, and the thistle is not a problem anymore. It's not eliminated in the sense that we it keeps us on our toes, but we have to check, we have to act when it comes back, but uh, the fields are very clean now. So we're going to next slide, number 32. Maybe you can start to be tired of all my trials. That's another farm uh, who has a problem with Canada thistle and cold food. So I'm kind of introducing cold food here. And uh, it wasn't, we didn't compare anything there, but uh, we did a spring fallow, three passes, May 10, May 17, June 19. The May 10 was probably useless because uh, the thistle camped later in the season. The seeding, the seeding date was June 20. And there was this huge, very dense patch of uh, thistle. And this, uh, this uh, spring fallow worked so well when I came in August, next slide, I couldn't find any thistle. Uh, you can see on the bottom uh, right, one little thistle, that's about all I, uh, I could find. So again, it worked. So we've repeated it on many farms with uh, quite a bit of success. What has been surprising, if you go to next slide, number 34, in uh, blue you have uh, the plant, the stems of thistle per square meter. Uh, and I checked, uh, I followed eight spots with dense thistle. So before the treatment, we had it varied between the lowest towards uh, maybe 20 stems per square meter to, to uh, 50. 
And after the salon, you can see everything was super controlled. Like we were basically at zero, except for one spot. One rep is different, and we don't know why. But again, it's just a warning that this plant can react differently. Uh, we think it might be where we bury the gauge, or, but it's really weird. Like if you go to next, the next slide, 35. Uh, the next year, after the, the treatment, the fallow with the bean, we have uh, wheat, and the top is the, the wheat field has its look. No fissile, nowhere, except this one spot uh, we, that was not controlled. We don't know why. So now I'm going into cold foot in slide 36. Next slide. On the same, on the same field, it's the same field as the previous trial. We also had a fair bit of cold foot that was coming from the ditch. So you can see it, uh, especially on the right. And you can see the density of the plant. In June uh, 2013, we had 107 plants per square meter and uh, the ground cover covered by the weed was 33 percent and after our spring fallow yeah, i went back i counted uh, in august 2013 and i went the year after and it had disappeared there was no more so we started to realize that what we we use for south Seoul and canada Seoul also works quite well for cold food So as a conclusion for this farm trial, Canada sea salt cold food, excellent control with three distractions. Probably two would have worked because the first one was too early. For Canada sea salt, it was not true for one rep and uh, we were not too sure why. Next uh, slide, 38. So now we're going into cold food uh, farm trial. And I have to say that all these fields with cold food also had south thistle. And uh, the treatment always worked for south thistle. I wasn't measuring it, but uh, often there was a fair bit at the beginning and it was completely gone at the end. And so one trial with the, the spring fallow, we started from uh, 190 plants per square meter. It got reduced to four plants per square meter after a year. Uh, summer, summer fallow and an aggressive uh, soya bean. Uh, the soapy soil here, I measured it. We started from 192 plants, it was reduced to zero. And that was with the three pass treatment. You can see that we did either two pass, June 11 and June 23rd, and three pass. May 30, June 11, June 23rd. Seeding was late as usual. You go to next slide and you can see really the, the results. Uh, um, sorry, that's another, that's another trial we did uh, where you can see the results of uh, two passes and three passes. The, 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 the previous slide, it was a, a different um, a trial on cold foot, and actually the two uh, treatment were two pass or three pass. But this uh, trial is interesting because the two treatments didn't work. The two pass didn't work. The three pass worked beautifully. And that brought us some more information. Here the two pass were made uh, May 17 and June 28. And uh, the three paths were made May 17, June 3rd, and June 28th. It's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to do two paths, June 3rd and June 28th. But uh, often uh, when we do on-farm trials, we don't do all what we want. And so the two paths, what you can notice, May 17, June 28th, there is a long time between the two. And uh, that was a problem. It's really a problem of timing um, because with such a huge amount of time between the two passes, 
the coast could manage to regain some uh, strength and some reserves, and it was impossible to eliminate it. Uh, so you can see, like on the well, the, the top picture three paths, there is not a plant left, and the bottom left two passes, the all the weeds regrew very well. And on the right picture, you have one spot which had two passes, and the one spot which had three, and the difference is, is really uh, striking. So for this farm trial. We had excellent control with tree destruction, and I think we would have had a good control maybe with two, but uh, with the right timing. And uh, but with the timing we had, the two destruction uh, didn't work. The interval was probably too long. So for the spring fallow, the timing and the weed stage are very important. How are we doing with time? Okay. I'm gonna um, uh, skip the next one. So we are 40, I'm gonna skip 41 because basically I explained it. The co if we go to 42, uh, you can see the cold foot. It was uh, at this stage when it didn't work. It was too advanced. They were starting to make new rhizomes and it was at 60 or more. So next slide, 43. Uh, so the key element to a spring fallow, well, the role of timing, we talked about it. We really have to make sure we hit the weed at the right stage. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the role of an aggressive crop, seeded after, and row spacing. Uh, role of timing, I just put the same slide as before, number, uh, next slide, the 44. Uh, I won't uh, uh, comment more. I already talked about it. I uh, will go to slide 45 for the role of an aggressive crop. And you can see here, uh, we had uh, done a spring fallow. We planted soya bean, and it worked really well, except in the area where there was no soya bean. And in this case, I think it was destroyed by, uh, by um, cultivation. And where the soya bean was not destroyed, even with the spring fallow, which was done at the right time, uh, the, the weed will grow. And the next year, next slide, next year, next slide, uh, we had a clean field, except in the spot where there was no soya bean competition, which was the bottom right uh, picture. So the, the competition after the spring fallow is really, really important. If you have no competition, the spring fallow is useless. Uh, next slide, number 47. The role of row spacing and cultivation. Um, here is a trial which uh, was done by a farmer. He wanted to see if uh, soya beans seeded uh, in five in spacing did better than 30 inch spacing plus cultivation. And uh, you can see the difference is striking. It follows the line uh, of the flowers. On the left, uh, the row spacing was 5 inch, not cultivated. And on the right, 30 inch cultivated. And I don't think really it's the spacing, I think it's the cultivation which uh, made the difference. But in this situation, it was something we did at the beginning. And the, the spring fallow was not done the right way. What we've noticed is if you do the spring fallow properly, uh, even if you have no cultivation, but uh, if you have a very aggressive crop, it works too. But the cultivation, if you can do it, and I know you do it in, a, you can do it in a, even in narrow rows, it, it really helps. I, th I think. Next slide, that was the following week year. We could really see like the, the limit between the non-cultivated part and the cultivated part. So we have to remember cultivation can really help. Next slide, uh, 49. Um, uh, just a brief, uh, a few words on other cultural practices. 
it's what I've noticed about tillage and uh, some of the stuff I've noticed for the hay. Uh, tillage, um, a lot of the research say that fall plowing helps again can, uh, against Canada thistle. And that's what we observe too, because when you fall plow, you uh, actually cut the, the stems at about uh, seven to eight inch deep and it forces the stem to regrow from that depth. I put some, some um, blue lines that shows how it regrows when we, we cut the stem. It regrows from the, the top part of the cut stem. That really forces the, the Canada thistle to exhaust itself. It also gives an advance to the crop. So the fall plowing, it doesn't solve the situation, but it, it's a little, it's a little thing that helps keeping it less aggressive. Next uh, slide. Uh, you can see the, the effect of plowing on Canada thistle on this picture. I've shown it before, but on the left you have uh, no fall tillage with the uh, ridges, and on the right you have fall plowing in this. It, there is the same amount of thistle on the right. It's just that it's been really delayed and it gives an advantage to the crop. It can help. Next slide. You can also see the effect of fall plowing on Canada thistle. That's a moldboard plow versus chisel plow. On the right, it's a moldboard plow. On the left, chisel. It, it comes back faster with the chisel. And this, I'm not too sure why, because the depth of work was about the same. There is a bit more work to do on that. Next slide. For, uh, can, for South Thistle, the plowing is not effective because basically when you plow, uh, your plow goes below these horizontal rhizomes and what it does is just redistribute the rhizomes in the entire layer. So after when uh, the, the South Thistle will go, it, you have all the stage at the same time. You have some roots at the, at the surface, some roots deep. So it's a lot harder to reach the good stage to uh, exhaust the crop. You have next slide, 54, you have, uh, you can see here some uh, Canada thistle regrowing fast in some parts of the plowed area uh, between the furrows and uh, what below the, the what was turned will come later on. You can see on the top right, like some uh, plant coming from the horizontal rhizome, even though it was uh, at the surface for the whole winter, it didn't seem to have been a problem. So that's what we get with the South Thistle. Next slide. Uh, what I want to say for plowing is, although it doesn't work for South Thistle, it, it still, if somebody needs to plow, it's the thistle is not the reason not to plow. The spring fallow will work, even if it has been plowed and we have the thistle coming at different stages. Uh, the effect of hay, uh, we're still doing some trials. Uh, next slide, 56. What we've noticed is uh, that you need at least three cats to uh, uh, decrease, decrease the strength of the thistle. So we haven't done much um, measurement, but that's our observation. Uh, like here, you have the density in blue, where we start from about uh, 25 stem per, per um, uh, uh, square meter, and um, it goes up to 80. We do, we do a first cut, it's indicated by the yellow arrow. The stems we grow, we still uh, at uh, 60. We do a second cut, second uh, yellow uh, arrow. Uh, it, we have still a lot of stem after, and it's only after the third cut that the uh, the number of stems really decrease. And that's what we get from people in our northern areas. They often do only two cuts of hay, and the hay doesn't work against uh, thistle or Canada and South thistle. We starting to investigate why it doesn't work. Um, so next slide, 57. 
So the effectiveness of pay, it can be very effective, sometimes even just with one year. Um, but we need at least three caps. And uh, what we've noticed is often when people try to see the hay, uh, when there is South FISO or Canada FISO, uh, it prevents the seedling to establish. And so we have no hay where we have South FISO or Canada FISO. And then in this situation, the hay doesn't work very well. Uh, I'm nearly finished. Uh, next slide. Um, here we have a picture of a soybean field, ha half the field, uh, the South Fisol, well, the Canada Fisol here was controlled with hay and half was controlled with uh, actually two spring fallow. And it's quite clean. There was, there is no difference. We didn't see any difference between these two treatments. They worked quite well. So next slide as a conclusion. Um, spring fallow followed by a cultivated soybean crop works well. I have to add that followed by a, 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 an aggressive crop or green manure, it works well as well. And make sure you properly destroy the weed with wide sweep that overlap well when you do the spring fallow. Make sure you have the good timing. Um, plowing may help for Canada thistle, but not for South thistle. And actually, it's unknown for cold food, but I think it helps. Hay can be effective with at least three cats. And um, do, uh, it should be another point, but what is really important, I think, is do not let seeding establish in the fall. Uh, next slide. Uh, you have some reports which have been translated in English on our site, which is citab.org. Um, yeah, that's it. If, uh, if you want to look at it, and uh, by the same token, uh, if you're interested in subsoiling, we also have one document which has been translated in English. Uh, which is very complete on subsoiling, uh, if you are interested. So I'm going to finish with that. I guess I was a bit long. Thank you to all for your patience to listen to me.